Okay, so it's standard form. Why is this not in standard form? It's really simple. What feels wrong to you, Karima? So the exponent, that's like the number. Yep. That's called the leading what? You need to know these words. That's called the leading what? Term. Leading term. The leading term is supposed to be in the front. So this is not in standard form. So the first job is, can you just move it to the front? That's not that hard. Okay. So then now it's in front and it's 7x to the 7th plus x to the 5th minus 3x. And the next question we could ask you about that is, hint, the y-intercept is where x is 0. So what's the y-intercept of this thing? The y-intercept is where x is 0. Did anybody just in their head put in a 0 here and a 0 here and a 0 here? Because that's what you should have done. And then y equals what? 0. There's nothing over there, so y equals 0. y equals 0 would be the y-intercept because we put in x equals 0. Now, if you wouldn't have known to do that, you should probably take notes on that because that's on the test. Finish this sentence for me by saying the right word. The y-intercept is where what? Okay, you got some growth. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. That headphone, if I could put it in jail, I would. I'm supposed to have it out by now. Okay, so I'm going to try, I'm going to keep saying it over and over again, if I have to. The y-intercept is where what? Not y equals 0, we'll try it again. Y-intercept is where what? X equals what? Zero. Zero. Okay, now we're starting to get a few people. So the y-intercept is where what? X equals zero. Yeah, well, we're going to do this more. Come on, you can do this. The y-intercept is where, say it out loud, use your voice. X equals, X zero. equals zero. Okay, thank you. So that'll help you remember it. Those of you that are like, I'm not going to say it. Well, you get to have it wrong tomorrow because you didn't say it, so you probably won't remember it. All right, so now if I give you a different equation, y equals x plus 4 squared, and you're like, but I don't see the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where x equals 0. So you stick in a 0 there, and do you get it's just 4 squared. What is 4 squared? 16. Okay, so the y-intercept here would be 16. All right, and there's also that lead term thing. I'm going to rewrite this, y equals x plus 4 squared. What's the lead term on that? Hint, it's not x. you got to think, if I multiplied it all the way out, you don't actually have to, but if you did, what would the lead number be? x squared is correct. And then what would the last number be? Because we don't care about the middle. What would the last number be? 16. Do you get how those are handy? That's the y-intercept, which is where x equals 0. And this part is the lead term. Next thing I've told you a million times is that you look at the very beginning, and if that's negative, then the function is going what? Uh, to the right, down. No, no, don't, don't start with the right, just the right. This is positive right now, so it is up on the right. If it was negative, then it would be down on the right. This only controls the right. What controls the left? That. And that is going to tell you it's not that it's left or right. It won't say that. It'll say even or odd. And what does even mean? Same or different? Same. Even means same. You may want to take notes on that. Even means same. Because then odd, what you'd probably know, would mean different. All right. So if this function has a negative in the front, and it ends with a 16, I could tell you a whole bunch of things. Look, the y-intercept is 16. I'm putting a dot way up here and calling it 16. It's going down on the right, so it must be down like this. And it's even so that it's also going down over here. So it could be just simple as that. All right, there's a reminder. Let's see if you can do one. Here's an equation. I want you to tell me on the right and on the left, you're going to use arrows like this. Maybe it's like this. Maybe it's not. And I want you to tell me what this would be. And if I square that, hint, you want to find the lead term. 
and you want to find the last number, the y-intercept. I'll pause for a second while you find the lead term in here and the y-intercept, which is where x equals 0 in there. And I'm going to pause while you give that a try. If there's one thing that you need to do to get the easy problems right, you have to understand when it goes up and down on the left or right. So make sure if you have something different than the other person that you really talk about it and try to learn from them or correct them about which way it goes up on the, and down on the left and the right. It's going to come up on this test a bunch. All right. So the lead term, just to make it easy to compare with the other kid, I want you to highlight your lead term here in red. So figure out what the lead term is and highlight it in red. And then I want you to highlight your y-intercept in blue. So you'll have two numbers to compare with them, the red one, which is the lead term, and the y-intercept in blue. And if you're lost and you're both lost, then maybe you should talk to somebody in front of you or behind you. Got to get these down. Once you have the lead term and the y-intercept, then I want you to sketch it. And some of you are even going to get fancy about, oh, it touches at 4 and negative 1. If you forgot that and all you can do is this part now, then just make a quick sketch like that until we talk about x-intercepts. But we haven't talked about that yet. So just make a quick sketch without the x-intercepts. At least you should know whether it's up or down on the right and up or down on the left. All right. Talk to that partner. Pausing while you do that. X to the third, and you are correct. Notice X squared and another X. Cool. And then the blue part, the Y-intercept, Karima. Uh, we got positive 16. Yeah, because negative 4 squared is 16. Now, I saw another kid uh, in a different class go like this. They put in a 0 here and a 0 here, and they just typed this into the calculator exactly. That totally works. Do you see what I mean? If they just put in a 0 for X and a zero for x, it's the y-intercept. And the calculator can do it for you. And you just take your whole equation, and wherever there's an x, you put a zero in, and type it all in the calculator. Because see, y equals that. And your calculator would do it. And it would be 16. So there's a 16 here. And now this goes through here. How is it different than last time? Well, it's still up on the right, because it's positive in front. But this time, it's odd. And so that means it's down on the left. If as long as yours was like this, where it's up on the right and down on the left, you were doing it right. Raise your hand if you had that much right. Okay, good. Now, here's how we get much more complicated. And this is getting into an R3 level, like one of the hard problems on the test, where we would say, where did it bounce? And where did it just pass through? Okay. You can probably can tell, I mean, I hope you can, but if I could just give you a quick reminder on this one, maybe you'll be able to do the next one yourself. Do you get negative one was one of the x-intercepts? Because negative one, when you put it there, makes this part zero. And four would make that part zero. And it bounces, this even numbers here make it bounce, that's a bounce. It bounces at the 4. So now if I know it goes up on this end, bounces at the 4, and then just passes through the negative 1, do you see how that's the actual real answer? Okay, let's see if you would have been able to do that right. I got the 4 from here. I got the bounce from the squared. Bounce there, see? All right, here's another one like that. Everybody write this one down. Y equals a negative in front. Don't miss it. And yes, that's included if you're going to use that to get the, uh, the y-intercept. Um, do you remember how you could type this in the calculator and get the y-intercept? You would put in x is what? Zero. And you just type in exactly what you see on the calculator with the parentheses and everything. And it would tell you the y-intercept. But the lead term, there's no way to do that with a calculator. You have to just use your head and go, 
Okay, that lead term in the front, I'd have to take each of these x's and the powers that they're to, and this negative in the front to get my lead term. Bunch of stuff I don't care about, and then the y-intercept goes at the end. Everybody, do a quality graph of this one, and then we're almost ready to have you start working on your homework. This is, we've covered a lot really fast. Now, tomorrow, I, I think it's extremely likely that you will be here. It's just whether or not we will have short classes or long classes. If you have a full-size class, then your test is tomorrow, and you got to be ready for it. If the classes are shortened, there's a chance then that we would just give you the R2s, the easy part of the test, which should normally take like 20 minutes. And so you'd have 30 minutes. So even people with extended time would have time to finish uh, their R2s tomorrow. That's, that's what I'm if, I'm, if I had to guess, that's what I would guess might happen tomorrow. Otherwise, if we just have a full day of school, duh, you finish your test tomorrow. All right, once you've done your best to figure out the lead term, and the y-intercept, and the little sketch of it, this is not right, by the way, uh, then compare it with the kid next to you. I'm gonna pause for a second while you try that. Okay, if you got this wrong right now, but you learn from me right this second, that, that's all that matters is can you learn it? So this lead, tells you so much it tells you whether it goes up or down on the right so like we need to know that right away so it's got a negative and an x and another x squared makes a total of negative x to the third it was the lead and then if you had typed this in your calculator with a zero here and here you would have gotten these two negatives would have canceled and made that positive two and then this would have been a 25 and a two times a 25 would have been a 50. Raise your hand if you had a 50 for that part. Okay, cool. Then I would put a dot here and call it 50, and it's going through that. Then this has a negative in front. That means down on the right. This one has a bounce at the, not the two, wait, there's a two, but no bounce there. There's a negative five squared. The negative five is the root. It's called the x-intercept. The negative 5c makes this whole thing equal 0 if I put in a negative 5. So negative 5 has got a bounce. So look, here's my negative 5 with a b. I'm going to put a b there for bounce. And then here's how I put it all together. I need to know that their odd tells me it's different on both ends. That means it's up here. So if it's going to bounce after going up there, it's going to go like that, and then it's going to go like that, and then it's going to go down like that, and that... This is how your graph looks. It's not perfect, but and then it goes through 50. It goes down on the right because it's negative in front. Mine has up on the left because it's odd, and they have to be different on each end. And it has a bounce happening here at the negative 5. That's a lot to know, but if you understood all of that, you're in pretty good shape for this next test. Yes? So on the test, do we not have to show how we got the x-intercept? You don't have to show the little solving of the x-intercept. I want to give you one that's trickier than usual. Would you have known what the x-intercept is on that one? And would you have known what it's doing? This one's super easy. It's 7, and it's bouncing. That's easy. 7, bounce. But what's this one doing, and what is it? Everybody take a minute. How do you do it? I would set it equal to 0 is how I would do it. But try to figure out what the x-intercept is and what it's doing. It's called its behavior. Is it bouncing? What's the only other choice if it's not bouncing? All right, I'll pause for a second. Figure out this x-intercept and what it's doing there. Okay, that one, you go 2x minus 5 equals 0. That's the point. You're trying to make it the whole thing equal 0. That's why it's called a 0. Another way to think of it is the x-intercept is where y equals 0. So if I set a y here and I say I want that to be 0, then you want this part to be 0. So 2x minus 5 equals 0. 2x equals 5. x equals 5 over 2. x equals 2.5. There it is. You could say 5 over 2 or 2.5. Raise your hand if you had that one right. This does help me know if I'm, I should do another practice or not. Okay. And then what is 2.5? It's a bounce? No, it is not a bounce. What does a 3 tell you? 
that it bounces, it goes through. You could say pass through or goes through. So then, now that we know those two things, everybody make a sketch of this. Hint, you'll need the lead term. I'm even gonna let you off on not having to do the y-intercept on this one. We do that on a test sometimes. Sometimes we don't care about the y-intercept. So this one's gotta be such a big pain in the butt to find the y-intercept. Let's just skip that. Just find the lead term, because that'll tell you whether it's going up or down on the right. We already know there's an x-intercept here and here. Those two are x-intercepts, 7 and 2.5. But can you figure out what the graph looks like? Well, if one thing, you at least you can put a 7 on here. Okay, Vivian, are you able to do this kind where it's got the 2x to the third and then another x squared? This is a tough one. Is it 2x to the third? You were so close. The 2 has to also be to the third. You know how this is 2x to the third? You know what 2 to the third is in your head? It's 8. So you were right on the x part. 8x to the fifth. Do you guys get how I got that 8? It came from this 2 being to the 3rd. You'd totally be able to borrow a calculator if you didn't have one. Use 2 to the 3rd on the calc. It would have been 2 to the 3rd, and it would have been 8. 8x eight to the 5th, you add this kind, and that's why it's 8x to the 5th. That tells me it's positive in front. Now that you know it's going up here, bouncing in one of the spots and passing through in the other spot, See if you can draw this. Oh, and it's odd. That also tells you something. I'll pause while you get the final sketch for this thing. This time I'm going to walk around, and I want to see if you have it bouncing in the right spot and what you have the ends doing. Pausing while I walk around and see your sketches. He's right. Since this is positive, it's going up on the right. Now, Victoria, tell us about the left. Up or down on the left, then? Down. Because why? because this is odd, and that has to be going the opposite. So it's going down over here. Good. Now, where's it bouncing? Liliana. Seven. And it's because of the two here that the seven is a bounce. Yes. So here's my line, and there's really only one thing left. If this bounces and the other one passes through, it must go like that. Who would have had that one right on the test? Okay, cool. Now let's start the Schoology quiz. Everybody right now find the Schoology quiz that is assigned for today. And let's just do the first couple problems together. There are a bunch of problems, but I want you to have a lot of time in class to ask me questions. And then this is the part where if you're really serious about wanting a good grade, this is the moment between now and tomorrow. If you take this really seriously, there's extra reviews you could do in the, in the Schoology folder. There's this practice quiz, and then you can ask me questions in class. All of those things show me that you really are going to try. Okay? For some of you, trying means you get a C. And for some of you, trying means you get an A. Now, I, I know you, people are all different in here. Some of you are just awesome at math naturally. Some of you aren't. But all of you will do better if you try. So <laughs> trying right this minute looks like opening the Schoology quiz. And then, as you get stuck, asking the kid next to you first, like, do you know how to do number two? Or coming up and asking me. I'm okay with either one. There'll probably be a line for me eventually, though. All right. Aben, would you read me number one? Yep. I know you actually got ahead, which was cool. You were the first person to open it, so. Oh, okay. All right. I'll come back to you, but I did see that you were already in there, so that's cool. Christian, could you read me number one? Uh, 2x5. To the fifth. Uh, plus 3x. Plus 3x. Uh, minus 5. Minus 5. And then they must have want to know some stuff. Uh, they want to know the degree. Degree. Aha. Which of these things tells you the degree? Noah? Yeah. So, did you say fifth? 
Just, just five. The number five is fine. Degree five. All right. Vivian, number two. Unless there's more to number one, which I don't think there is. What's the last number? Plus one. Plus one. Thank you. Now, that plus one is the constant. And did any of you catch that there's a x squared here and there's an x squared here? And this biggest power is not in front yet. So the job here is to put it in standard form, and then you'll be able to tell what the degree is. So standard form says the biggest power goes in front. Then you got to put these together. I know what's on the test, and you probably don't. But one of the questions is probably put this thing in standard form. Okay, so then I'm putting the 7x and the 2x together and making 9x squared. And then there's a minus x, and then there's a plus 1. Why is this any better? Because the biggest power is in front. And now, what's the degree? Grace, what degree is it? 4, good. If they had asked you, is it going up or down on the right... This would be screaming out what? Down. Down on the right. And this would be saying both ends are the same. The four would be saying that. All right. Okay, you started. That means in my book you're halfway done. So keep on working on the Schoology quiz. If you have individual questions, please walk up and ask me or ask the kid next to you. They're taking the same exact quiz as you are. And that's all I have for your review. Test is tomorrow. Either way, it's tomorrow. It's just whether we... Have time to do the whole test or just part of the test?